Thank you so much for the beautiful reading of Deuteronomy 20. It, um, I, I, I just loved going through the verses as I was preparing um, this morning. In my Bible, the, the title for, the, for this chapter says, Principles Governing Warfare. And I, I discovered six principles as I went through um, the, the chapter. But maybe somebody else has discovered more. We'll find out when we come to the discussion bit. Um, Deuteronomy 20, verses 1 to 4. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and the people more than thou, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The first principle, approach the battle confidently. Do not be afraid, do not tremble, do not be terrified at the magnitude or the reputation of the opponent or enemy. And the reason is given in verse four, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you. But also because we know of the power of positive thinking. So many books have been written about the power of positive thinking. It's big business to encourage people to think positively, to think um, good things, to think I can do it and so forth. And they all draw upon principles that, are, that God has been trying to tell us from Genesis all the way to Revelation. The, the, we also know the powerful impact of fear and discouragement. The greatest weapon in Satan's arsenal is discouragement, hopelessness. The Bible says without a vision, without hope, the people perish. Um, in, in 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 okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll go. Yes, um, a story is told, and it's a true story of two men who were attending um, a GP surgery, and they both went for tests. Um, one was was very ill. He had been given, his doctor thought, two weeks, maybe two months at most to live. And the other was, was healthy. He was a healthy man. He had just gone in for a routine checkup. But when they gave them the results, they switched them. They gave the wrong man the, <laughs> the results, or they gave this man the results of the other man. And so the one who, who was very, very ill got the diagnosis that he was fine. And so he went out and he was happy and he lived life to the full because what he had thought was a death sentence. But now they've said he's okay. But the man who was all right, the one who had a health, who was healthy, had just gone in for a routine checkup. When he received his cancer diagnosis, he went into despair. He got discouraged. He went into depression. And sure enough, within two months, that man was dead. The power of positive thinking or the impact of negative thinking. So when you go into war, do not be afraid. Whatever you're facing, it can be a health diagnosis. It can be bankruptcy. It can be divorce. It, it can be um, a, a, a redundancy. Do not be afraid. Do not look at the opponent. Do not look at the enemy. Do not look at the foe. Look at the mighty God who goeth with you and before you to fight your battles. Verses five um, up to nine. Um, and, and, and we did read it, so maybe I won't read it, but we find the second principle. And that is commitment, focus. It's all or never. In, in the New Living Translation, it says, 
Then the officers of the army must address the troops and say, has anyone here just built a new house and not yet dedicated it? If yes, go home. We don't want that you, uh, you to be distracted by thinking that, oh, what if I die? Somebody else is going to dedicate my house. Has anyone here just pl planted a vineyard? They're not eating yet of the fruit. You go so that nobody else has the opportunity. We don't want you distracted. We don't want your, your mind thinking about um, what how the plants are doing in the vineyard. No, we want your mind to be on the battle. Have you just married? Ah, you go. We don't want you worried about who's going to be with your wife if you died. Have you, have you, are you engaged? <laughs> if, if you're engaged and have not yet married her, go and marry her. And, you know, we want you to be focused. We want you to be committed. We want you to focus wholly on, on, on the situation that you are. There is an idiom that says, if you are in a situation and you burn your boats. There is a phrase called burn your boats. If you're in a situation and you burn your boats, it means you have destroyed all possible ways of going back to that situation. You cannot change where you are. In 1519, a man called Hernan Cortes arrived on, in the Americas with 600 men. And upon arrival, when they landed, he told his, his men to burn the boats. And the, 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 of course, there was consternation. Why are we burning the boats? How will we escape? And he said, exactly. We don't want when this battle becomes fierce, you think about the boats and escaping. Once you have burnt your boats, there is no turning back. We are here. We do or die. We either succeed or we die. There is no turning back. And two years later, he succeeded in his complete conquest of the Aztec Empire. When he arrived, his soldiers were discouraged. They were tired. The natives were not friendly. And it was a strange land. But Cortes wanted to conquer this land. And he would have none of it. And so he burnt his boats. And now the soldiers knew that it's either them or us. And so there was it, it, the, the phrase, the life or death situation became more alive now. Is there anyone who can identify with Cortez men? Are you discouraged? Are you tired? Are you trying to do your best in a hostile environment? Does divorce seem like the only option now? You need to burn your boat. You, you will be fighting for life because there is no choice. You either win or die. Once you destroy the, your, the options, you have put all your eggs in one basket, and hopefully it's God's basket. And that is when his words make sense. It is in weakness that his strength is made perfect. Because when you have run out of options, the only thing left is to look to heaven for help, for that is where all our help comes from. It is at that point when you let go of the reins and give God room to fight the battle for you. In verses 10 and 11, we find the third principle. Romans 12 verse eight says, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Psalm 34 verses 14 and 15 says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Sometimes the outcome can be achieved by a peace treaty rather than a declaration of war. In fact, they say honey attracts flies better than vinegar. We are now in verse 12. Verses 12 to 15. Even when war is the only option, you can be compassionate, kind, polite, and understanding. In verses 16 um, to 18, um, but of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save nothing alive that breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, 
the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations which they have done unto their gods, so should ye sin against the Lord your God. Principle number five, do not be yoked with unbelievers. Amos 3 verse 3 reads, can two walk together except they be agreed? And if you're a scientist, you know very well the principle of osmosis. It is the movement of water molecules from a solution with high concentration to a solution with lower concentration through a cell's partially permeable membrane. So as long as there is a, a solution with high concentration and the permeable membrane and the solution with low concentration, the molecules will move until the solution, the concentration is the same. We also have the principle of by beholding, we become changed. The carnal mind accepts error as easily as a sponge accepts water. Close proximity, constant interaction breaks down the barriers, often more easily from good to evil rather than from evil to good. Why? Because we are inherently sinful. Jeremiah 17 verses 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The principle also means do not toy with sin. First Thessalonians 5.22 says, abstain from all appearance of evil. And James 4 verse 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Give up everything. Do not hold on to anything. Allow God free reign in your life. We know what happened when the Israelites did not obey this um, principle. And they were warned in Joshua 23, verse 13, um, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. They had been given an instruction to utterly drive out whoever they found there. Do not allow them to stay with you. In Exodus 23, 31 and 33, God says, I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, from the desert to the Euphrates River. I will give into your hands the people who live in the land and would drive, and you will drive them out before you. Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Do not let them live in your land, or they will cause you to sin against me, because the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare unto you. And in Deuteronomy 7, verse 7, when the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering, to possess and drives out before you the many nations, these nations were larger and stronger than Israel. Israel. And when your Lord, the Lord your God has delivered them over to you and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them. Show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods, and the Lord's anger will burn against you and quickly destroy you. This is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, cut down their Asherah poles, and burn their idols in, in the fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Please just give me a little bit more time. I'm almost there. In verse 16, he says, you must destroy all the peoples the Lord your God gives over to you. Do not look on them with pity. Do not serve their gods, for that will be a snare to you. You may say to yourself, these nations are stronger than we. How can we drive them out? We are in a spiritual battle. The great controversy is spiritual warfare. The principles laid out in Deuteronomy 20 were made for physical battle, but they apply to the spiritual warfare too. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Everything that holds us back, that weighs us down, must be stripped off. Do not say to yourself, these nations, tendencies, temptations are stronger than I am. How can I drive them out? Look to Jesus. For 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 to 6 says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Principle number six is drawn from 19, verses 19 and 20. Be wise. Do not cut off your nose to spite your face. Don't destroy everything out of spite. Be wise. My last word to us this morning is from Ephesians 6, reading from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be, ma you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the day of, in the evil day. And having done all to stand, do not be discouraged, be positive. Have only one option, God. Get rid of anything that is not like God in your life. Be honest with yourself, understand yourself, surrender everything to God. Understand that this is a spiritual battle and must be fought with spiritual weapons and allow God to do the fighting. He knows better and is infinitely wiser.